Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Kachina Aurora Kitchen Witchery Podcast on another episode of Conversational Witchcraft. Today, we have the incomparable, amazing, beautiful Elise Marie, actress, writer, and certified holistic nutritionist. Elise Marie is passionate about a plant-powered lifestyle aligned with the cycles of the earth, moon, and stars. She's been creating health and beauty potions for over 30 years, drawing from ancient traditions, herbalism, astrology, tarot, and earth magic. She's been featured in international she's been featured internationally in magazines websites and in live events she's a contributor to enchanted living magazine which you know i love which is also which also presents her monthly online column the beauty witch she recently launched an eco lux beauty collection available at the beautywitch.com elise welcome Thank you. Welcome. Dawn. Welcome. <laughs> oh, so happy that to was have quite you. an intro. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it's when, when you, I, cause like when you write out your intro, right. And you send it off to people, you never read it and you never hear it. And then when you hear it out loud, you're like, Oh, right. Yeah. You're kind of impressive. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. I'm glad, you. I'm glad we got here. I'm glad we made it here today. This has I been a few weeks. So I know, I know. Very and I'm glad to see your face. And you, yeah. And it's funny as we were just chatting before we started recording about, uh, you know, always being busy and people not, you know, like, things taking time, like the nature of people taking their sweet ass time, getting back to you. And you and I had this little bit of back and forth. We had an email issue. I don't know. I had the wrong email address on file for you. So I kept sending you stuff and it was going to the wrong place. You know, I mean, but you had said right before we started recording, we're all busy. Like let's, let's be curt. Like it's about finding that balance and being courteous, right. Like getting in touch with people and stuff. Absolutely. And just having that awareness that you're not the only busy person. <laughs> I know people love to, to think that they're the only one, you know, everything's a revolving around their right. whatever, right. but right. everyone is experiencing the same thing. So, right. you know, let's just take those moments, answer those emails, have that correspondence. So people aren't hanging and I, waiting. I agree. And I find so often, um, and it's just me. It's my own type anus, right? Because I am just like you. I'm like, I want things done. I I have too much going on. I can't be waiting. Um, and and I I want to uh make everybody move at my pace. And I <laughs> right. I'm not going to, I yeah. <laughs> Some might say I'm a little guilty of that. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I, I love that. I love that. Like you were one of those people where we're trying to book this. And even with the miscommunication and the email address being wrong and whatever, you were on top of your game. You were emailing me. We were having a conversation back and forth. I wasn't waiting. Like someone on the other end who is exactly the same way. I love that. I love it. Me too. Me too. And I so appreciate it. And it's a bit rare too. Sometimes you get a lot of floatiness. I've noticed it just seems, I don't know if it's just my industry, your industry, or in general, but there's a lot of floatiness. <laughs> and I, I would am, agree I'm with like you. you. Yeah. I, I'm like you. I like everything immediately, if not sooner. And um, any amount of lag time to me is just... It's just feeding the fire that's going on inside and it's going to start just coming out. Yes, a hundred percent. And you said, you, you know, you are in multiple industries, right? You're an actress, you're, you're, you create products, you write, you do all these different things, right? So, yeah, I mean, I would guess, I mean, I, in my world, cause I run a business and then I'm also, you know, in, in the witchcraft community, but my, my business is also a witchcraft business. You do get a lot of folks I think are, um, not as grounded. And so when you're saying mm -hmm. floaty, right? Like people aren't as grounded. And I think a lot of that just comes from a, a disconnection with self or disconnection with spirit, um, or disconnection with earth too. Um, ah, yeah. Right. Right. 
do you find that? And do you find that more in, in these different industries that you're in? Cause you're prominent in so many different industries. I, it's very funny. You say that because I think that the floaty types of people consider themselves more spiritual and therefore are more uh, between the waves of, of the ether, you know, mm -hmm. and I have a little bit of trouble with that. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I do find it more in certain areas of, of, of life for sure certain communities i haven't the acting has taken a, a major backseat for quite some time because it's been all about book and writing and uh, potion conjuring not just for all the recipes and all the the outlets but also for my my website which has a lot to do with uh, keeping up the trademark honestly yeah uh, but I right loved, I love doing it but there's but there's a certain pressure that comes with that but yeah I do love doing it and I'm very fussy about only releasing the things that I'm just crazy about in the moment and I get this feeling like people have to know about this right now yeah right now of course right now right now everything's right now <laughs> But yes, I do find that I, I do find that there's a disconnect. I feel that there's, yeah, there is a disconnect from spirit. I love that you put it that way because I didn't actually think of it that way. I always think it's a disconnect from more of the earthly plane that says there are other people mm. and, and, and we kind of need to consider that. And I've had that situation a few times over the over the decades where I thought to myself, how do you get to be the flighty spacey artist? Mm. I don't get to be the flighty spacey artist. Mm -hmm. You don't get to be the flighty spacey artist. Right. right. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. there's a lot of that. You know, I, I do find a lot of that. And I do find interestingly enough, in in the acting world it's the business. So yeah. most people are very, very professional and mm. very on time and very, at least that I've interacted with. And it's, it's no joke because there's 10 people that have your, they your look exactly like you, your they resume, yeah. Yeah, yeah. your measurements waiting if yeah. you don't do stuff. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's a very yeah yeah I've I've um it's been an interesting ride I love <laughs> that you brought that up about um you know like well you don't get to be the floaty the flighty artist and I don't get to you know how come you get away with that and I don't get right. away with that right? right but I think that this and and I feel like um something that we don't talk a lot about is you know as as a as a community is what it takes to be successful as a business person and a witch right it's yes yes right and I think that you know there is a and I'm, I'm gonna people are gonna send me nasty emails I'm gonna say this but I'm just gonna say it. I think there is a accepted uh mentality of oh well we're the witches and so you know I live in this realm and I don't have to you know well I can be late for this. So, you know, I can do that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have to, oh, I forgot. Or, oh, I was working with, I was in my garden for hours mm -hmm. and I forgot. And you're like, well, you, and then there becomes a little bit of like a resentment of, well, how come you're a successful professional witch and I'm not? And it's like, well, I, it's like the yeah. opposite of what you're saying, right? Like, yeah, because I work my ass off and I'm on time and I get my mm -hmm. shit together and I reply mm -hmm. to my emails, right? Do you experience that? Because you are really a successful pay witch business. Like you really are. And like you said, you have that, that, you know, keeping up the trademark and you have a brand. And as someone who has the same, I find that frustrating when others don't uh, see those two as the, the spiritual work, as the, the business work as parallel. I, I find it incredibly frustrating and I, and I would take it even further to say that you're harming yourself, you're harming your own business and you're harming, I think you're harming the, the name as a whole, 
Mm. Because now you're saying we're all we're empowered, we're powerful, we we make things happen, but not really, because right. we just kind of flop with the mob, so to speak. And I don't, yeah, that doesn't really sit well with me. And I don't find it just in the the witch community. I find it spread it up into oh. Oh, I'm going to hear about this. Right. Um, <laughs> the, 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 let's say the new age community, the spiritual yeah. community at yeah. large, by and large, not the, not the yogis and the, the Eastern people that are incredibly rooted in, in spirituality, but more the new agey businessy kind of things. Mm. And I do find a lot of that. And, mm. I always had a had a joke with a with a really good friend of mine because he experienced it a lot in in his in his business and we would say, yeah, people follow their bliss right up their own rears half the time, you know. Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> and it was so true. And we would say, oh yeah, here we go, you know. Yeah. So. so and um, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of people you can't say these things to. Absolutely. So I love that we can talk about this because. You don't get off the hook because you're spiritual, because you're a witch. Because if anything, I think you are so blessed to have that title. Right. Why not really set this phenomenal example? I agree. People don't see what you do behind closed doors, your right. rituals, your what you're manifesting for yourself. They don't really care. Right. What they want to know is what are you putting into the world that's good? And right. how are you making some sort of a difference? And and I, I I hit on that in my book a little bit, but probably more on social media because I'm I'm probably more outspoken, and I'm actually extremely outspoken. I have to reel it in a lot. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but <laughs> I have a lot of opinions. But I feel like I'm I feel very strongly that we have to really take very good care of ourselves. And that's what just makes us all the more powerful. And part of that is developing all these areas. Part of Absolutely. it is taking care of the body and, and your insides and your outsides. But part of it is developing how you interact with people. And Absolutely. What kind of effect do you show them or not show them? You know? Absolutely. And I think that does come back to exactly what you're saying about taking care of self, loving self, respecting self. Um, you know, I, I just read the most beautiful quote. And of course I can't remember. It was like 20 minutes before we got on this, on this interview, it was the most beautiful quote. Can't remember who it said, what it said exactly, but it was something <laughs> to the uh, uh, effect of, you know, instead of in response to the anxieties of the world, the best thing you can do is take care of yourself and mm -hmm. how you respond to the anxieties of the world, whether that is the world at large or your own internal, your, your, your family structures or your work structures. The best thing you can do is work on yourself, heal yourself. Uh, otherwise the sickness comes from within you and you cannot help anyone. And you just spread it all over. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And I feel like there's got to be a lot more attention paid to that and a lot less attention paid to what's trendy now on social media and what do I have to do and what, what is that person doing? And I, I just feel like there's, if, if it's not constantly coming from within, you're missing it. You're missing something. I love that. I love that so much. So, because your work really is about exactly what you just said. It has to be coming from within. And we know you're the beauty witch and we know you have this beautiful book, The Beauty Witch's Secret. But I'm, before we get into like diving deep into this book itself, I like, how did you become this person focusing on taking care of self and being able to take that and put it out into the world. Like you, I know you've been practicing for a, a really long time. I know you've been creating, uh, you know, your potions and, and beauty products for a really long time, but 
you haven't been doing that your whole life, right? You're a nutritionist, you're an actress, you, you all these things. So at what point did these things intersect with witchcraft? Well, for me, they, I think they, the seeds were there very early because for me, it wasn't so much in terms of the spiritual aspect. It wasn't so much about learning something or discovering something, which is a beautiful thing when that happens, but it was more about remembering. Mm. It was more about recalling. And because I had all these experiences when I was very, very, very young and everything from just seeing uh, spirits and, and going out into the moonlight in the middle of the night in my window when I was three years old to, and not knowing really why, just it was important. And going right. out into the little bit of yard we had and pulling all these things out of the ground and bringing them into, I used to, <laughs> I used to bring um, my little concoctions, put everything together with dirt and anything I could get my hands on Yeah, in my mother's little containers, which she didn't know I was swiping. Of course. And I put them in my closet, which was my laboratory. And I was making something. I love it. I don't know what it was. And eventually my mother, what is that? Oh, and you've got like my... rotten leaves and dirt oh, and yeah, some sort of some sort of something was decaying and, oh, and you know, goodness. something was happening. And I just she she kind of understood in her own way. She didn't make a big fuss about it, but she would say, like, what is that? Stench oh, and where that's is it coming hilarious. from? What's it coming from your closet? Oh, that's my laboratory. Oh, okay. So there was all of that, and then it, it sort of cross pollinated at some point with a lot of independence on my part. I'm mm. an only child. I had a kind of a tumultuous time when I was a kid so there was a lot of just me figuring things out on my sure. own taking care of myself on my yeah. own and that kind of developed over the years into being a teenager and getting really that much more in tune with nature and elements and middle of the night psychic things going on and just wow. I really couldn't have explained it to you yeah it just I knew it was all there and I knew it was somehow important and then that eventually became you know as a probably I don't know 16 I, I can't remember that far back but <laughs> probably I 16 is is sticking in my head for some reason that I started to put it all together with having this really strong sense of animal rights, because that was all over the wow. news at the time. PETA was really active and, you know, there was no internet. And so this was a really big deal. And I was learning about this and I had older friends and they were vegetarian. And so I had to be vegetarian and it was all kind of, coming together and then started this understanding of well if I'm not going to put it wasn't just not meat or it was just no chemicals no processed if I'm not going to put this inside then why am I going to put it on my skin right and so it just all kind of melded together and right. and I did have a very strong sense of if I don't take care of myself no one else is going to and that sounds kind of awful, but it actually served me really well because I still feel that way. Yeah. I still, even with, with friends and, and people, I'll just always say like, it's, it's got to come from you. It's got to come from you. And I feel so strongly about that. And I still do. I still, we have challenges every day. Yes. Yeah. And, and it always comes back to, okay, what can I do to help myself in this situation? What can, how can mm -hmm. I improve? How can I see it differently? Mm -hmm. How can mm -hmm. I maybe react differently? Mm -hmm. 
And sometimes it's, no, that happened. That person said that, or that wasn't cool. or But then it becomes, what do you do about it? Because you can't control them. Correct. So what do you do? Correct. And, and it does come back to these petite rituals that are about rejuvenating yourself, mm. re-empowering empowering yourself re almost reinventing yourself in the moment mm -hmm, mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. being this you know exhausted stretched stretched this exhausted stressed out wretch to have got it together again somehow right and, and I, I think that's a really important point so many things in what you just said are so important you know the first thing I want to comment on is the it has to come from you, right? We, <laughs> when people are like, oh, are you a solitary witch? Or do you have a coven? And I'm like, we're all solitary witches. We're all solitary witches because when we're not with others, we're alone. And I'm still a witch when I'm by myself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So so what I practice in an everyday way through my art of kitchen witchery and taking care of my home and uh, how I think, what I consume, uh, what I choose to read, what I choose to watch on television. That's all self-care in, in my opinion. And when you break it down, we really do have only ourselves, right? I, I am in a very loving partnership, but I'm still in my own head all the time, right? I still live with me, even though I live yeah. with him, right? So I think that that you make a very great point when you say it comes down to you and it's it's your own responsibility, I think, to take care of you. Very much so, because when you start looking to others to do it, you've just lost your power. Yes, completely. yes, and, yes. And you'll lose a lot more if you keep going. And uh -huh. that's that's a problem. And no matter what, you're still you. You are you, whether you're, you know, in a, a personal relationship, a business relationship, a relationship with a person that you get coffee from in the morning, you, you're you still you and you're bringing that, like you're saying, everything that you ingest is part of your self-care. It also then becomes what you put into your your own work, your own everything, your interactions, yes. your kitchen witchery, your your concoctions everything so it's so crucial and i think that we're very i know that we're very much in a society and have been for a very long time where it's all about melding into there's a lot of emphasis put on absorbing into something else else absorbing into a group a relationship that's the big one mm -hmm. a family which is all great, but you don't want to absorb into it. You want to be your own person that's part of it and contributing. What a great point. What so a great it, point. I, I just think there's not enough. And and that's why, and I, and I get it. I really do get it. And I'm not trying to be critical of any of this. But when I hear things like find your tribe, I get like, because... Yeah, I get it. However, you are an individual member of that tribe. Mm -hmm. So what are you bringing to it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, that that's, I think that kind of phrase gets thrown around a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the, the truth behind something like that is, at least for me and in my experience is, find a group of people that make you feel like you can be your best self at all times with them and that you can help them to uh, be their best selves as well. And that you have a reciprocal relationship with them because human beings are social creatures and our biology is programmed for uh, group, group dynamics. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like I, I literally had this conversation with my therapist two days ago about, um, you know, that feeling of being left out or the feeling of being, um, excluded from a group because we are biologically programmed that we will survive better when we're in a group. Now, a lot of us maybe don't fit into, or like you said, cannot absorb into the 
family groups in which we were born or raised. And so we have gone out into the world to find or create those spaces for ourselves. I think so many people go, oh, find your tribe or build your own family or choose your family. And you still wind up unhappy because you're not being true to yourself and you're not finding people that lift you up. You just want to belong instead mm -hmm. of finding belonging within yourself and then attracting the people that will, that will want to be around that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It, it's absolutely makes sense. It's, and, and, and to your point too, if you, if you are being true to yourself and you are taking care of yourself and you're always kind of working on yourself, yes. really, don't you bring your best self to every group and yes. don't you and don't you inspire others to do the same mm -hmm. because you're not necessarily I mean we all sort of put on different hats for different reasons but how far out are you from being you in any situation probably not terribly far because right. you're a confident person but for anyone I think there yeah I do think there's a lot of it's, it's dismaying when it's just about belonging yes. and it's like, well, I just want to be a part of something. Well, you're a part of you right? and you bring something gorgeous. In. So right. Yeah, be, be, be proud of that. Yes. And, and show people what you got, you know, that's yeah, and show yourself. Yes. Show yes. yourself, you know, yes. speak your own love language to you. Right. Yeah. If, if, yes. if your love language is, quality time, take yourself out on a date, do something with yourself <laughs> for yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, and that's, and I know we've got, got, got a kind of off track here, but I think that's the basis of, of what you're teaching is loving yourself and, and finding that internally so that you can bring it out into the world. And before we get further into that, I want to bring it back to you beginning your journey as a witch right? And, and making your potions and all that. And he's saying, you're having this real reverence for nature and the living world and animals and all that. Were you, did you have a light bulb moment where you were like, oh, I'm a witch. That's what I am. Or yes. you did. Yes. Can you tell us about that? I, it, it was something that I, I knew inherently on a certain level. I never talked about it. I never asked about it. Mm -hmm. I never, it wasn't really a, a trendy thing when I was a teenager or a preteen. It just wasn't right. that. It, no. I, I, I am too old for that. That happened a little later. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I uh, so, well, it's hard to explain to audiences what the world was like before. It's like, no, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have internet. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have the internet. Go you to a bookshop. You had yes. to like, the library to yes. find this. you so, had to actually yeah. have a conversation with another person and you had to be brave enough to walk into a new age shop or a witchy shop in the first place and then you had to be brave enough to talk to the person behind the counter and say hmm, I don't know what I'm talking about but I'm looking for a book that maybe is on this and cross your fingers that they would be nice to you and help exactly. you find what you're looking for especially no, if you're don't an understand. awkward teacher absolutely and <laughs> you had you even you know you even had to go to record stores to to find out about music i mean yep. hey, uh yes. you had to actually go you had to actually go to 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 shows to see bands and yes so it's a different yeah, world so, oh i miss that world so yeah i did have a light bulb moment in terms of defining it and again mm. this is this is a generational thing because everybody now I notice I do have I do have quite a few younger readers and I notice that there's a lot about categorizing and having I'm this I'm not this I'm that and that and when when I was growing up we didn't want that we did not want to be categorized mm. it was mm. no, no 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 don't do that so you didn't automatically assign yourself a name or a title or anything like that. You just, 
you know, just, I'm just me, I'm just me. So I did have a moment, I was a teenager. I was in New York City at a very legendary shop called Magical Child that no longer exists. Mm -hmm. And I remember being slightly intimidated and I was going through, I, I'm sure it was a pile of, I don't know if it was a pile of used books, but I was looking through books and I saw Scott Cunningham's Magical Encyclopedia of Herbs, I think it's called. Yeah, I, think I still I have, have, it. I have, it right I still here. have here it my is. old copy. Right there. It is, yes, yes, there the, it green is. One, the, the green one. The green one. Yes, with the, with the, the sweet cover illustration. Yes. And I still have it. And it's, you know, it's dilapidated and dog-eared and written in and crazy. As it should be. Of course, of course. And I just remember holding it and looking at it. And I just, and you know, and the scent of witch shops is usually, it was kind of like Truly a heavy lavender. And... Well, it was a heavy lavender, yeah. I remember. Yeah, because I think they were sprinkling lavender and salt in all the... <sighs> It's funny because I always put rose petals in everything I ship out. Yeah. And I spray the paper with uh, one of my one of my scents that I make. And so that's that had a big impression on me. And I I was just held it and I sort of probably s- stared at it kind of idiotically for a while. And I didn't even open it. I didn't even mm. I didn't even have to. Right. And I just thought witchcraft. And, and it wasn't, you know, a black book. It wasn't ominous in any way. It wasn't a great big old tome that Gandalf would have right. in the library somewhere. It was just this innocent looking green, beautiful book with a, with a woman on the cover and butterflies. And, and I thought, okay, this is me. This is, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. bought it. And I was probably very, very awkward buying it. And uh, yeah, and I, I, that was, that was the moment. And I remember it kind of cracked things open just internally for me. I didn't really yeah. talk to anybody about it. I didn't have anyone I could talk to about it. Yeah. But I thought, hmm, okay this is me, this is what I do, this is who I am, this all now has a name that I can associate yeah. with it. It was funny, my father just sent me a photo. And I just said, where did you find this? My father's a photographer. And he sent me this photo and it was, it was when I was four years old and I was dressed up in a full sorcerer's <laughs> get up oh that that's my adorable mother had, my mother had made yeah and so I had the conical hat and moons and stars huge giant black hat I was this incredibly tiny child and <laughs> still an incredibly tiny adult and and this this long cloak and I was just you know looking at the camera and I was a really strange looking kid so it was even a more odd looking photo and he just sent it to me and he said see the beauty witch you always knew and oh. I said where did this come from and I remembered it I remembered that Halloween I remember the costume but I was and he said I recall you didn't ever want to take it anymore. oh <laughs> oh my goodness so it was just funny because I'd always you know like everyone you read fairy tales you watch films you have all these books you you're very attracted to all of this but you don't put it together with you yes at all until yes. a certain point and so from then on and it took me years and years and years in fact for certain people certain relatives and it's funny because generally I don't give a fig about what anyone knows or yeah or I what anyone thinks I just I and and I was yet very protective in some ways of this part of me that's so important to me yeah and and it you know you protect it like a child like a like a I don't have actual children but like an animal yeah and 
there were still a few people that were asking me because I'm sure you know you uh, before a book comes out you, there's a huge amount of time from the, the moment you write it to the time it appears on the yes it's <laughs> enormous process that goes on and so there was quite a while where people knew that I had written this book and I was shopping it and then they knew I had a publisher and then they knew I made a decision about which publisher I wanted to go with and, right and they kept saying so well, what's the title of the book and I there were a few people in my family and 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 just people I knew that I would say, oh, I don't know yet. We're, we're working it out. It's probably going to be up to the publisher. I, yeah. And, and, and one person actually said to me, you're leaving it up to someone else. I don't <laughs> buy it. And, I, and I was just like, mm, well, no. And I would just change the subject. Yeah. And they were not buying it. And when it finally, finally, I remember that moment, which was not really that long ago, it was I don't know, a year ago or something where I said, oh, it's it's called The Beauty Witch's Secrets. And they're like, and I was expecting this huge dramatic, what, what are you, what? And, you know, people that aren't on social media have no idea what I do. Right. And they like, oh, that's that's an interesting title. I like, I like the secrets that makes it sound like, it, you know. <laughs> and then, you know, and then it's, it's just out of the broom closet completely, isn't it? So. <laughs> right, right. I, listen, there's still people um, that I'm related to that have no idea what I do. Hmm. Like, this is my entire life. This is, you know, they're like, oh, you make olive oil. I'm like, yep, that's what I do. You I know, don't need to know. Uh, yeah. my, the <laughs> name of my company is Kachina Roar Kitchen Witchery. Like, that's right. what's on the shelf at Whole Foods. Kachina Roar Kitchen Witchery. Like, I'm not hiding. But you, they choose to see what they want to see. They, oh, they do. They, they, they hear choose. what they want to hear. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's interesting. And I wanted to ask you about about your business for a second too. But yeah, but I just wanted to say that my I have I have this whole realm too that's really not okay. There's witch in the title, and and there's witch on the labels, and all of this. Yeah. But I have this whole world that's just about you know, green beauty and eco beauty and is communicating with more of the mainstream yep. world, a, a big part of what I do. And they don't really bat an eyelash, which is very interesting. So care. I think some people, at least for me, will, will think like, oh, at least she makes beauty products. She, she, she does something with skincare and I don't know. She does something. She writes mm -hmm. about it. She writes for magazines. She's she does mm -hmm. her own thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if for you, because kitchen witchery is part of the title, do you feel like the kitchen part of it makes it just homey, cozy? I do. Non-threatening. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I do. I absolutely do. And and um, I've not to diverge, but um, yeah, I, I think that what we are doing, you and I, what we're doing is bucking stereotype, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I've been very lucky to start and run a successful business that walks the line yes. between the magical community and the the mainstream community, um, wizards and muggles, if you will. And, um, <laughs> you know, and have the opportunity to be like, hi, I'm a witch and I'm not scary. Right. You know, like right. I'm, what I'm talking about is putting love into your food and cooking with intention and bringing people together around food. That's my magic. Just like you're sitting here talking about loving yourself and taking care of your skin and put, taking care of your body and doing all these things. Everybody gets that, you know? So when you, when you have a message and you have a brand and you have a product that everybody gets when you have the opportunity to show people that it is actually witchcraft, they become, they go, Oh, just like you with that, it, with Cunningham's encyclopedia book, it wasn't this esoteric or, or, no. or heavy ass, you know, scary looking occult book. It no. was about using the natural world herbs and spices mm -hmm. for health and healing, whether it's spiritual or um, physical. And right. I think that mainstream people 
maybe not when, when I was growing up and certainly not where I was growing up in the community I grew up in, but depending on where you are and depending on, you know, the community at large around you, people do get it. Um, and I had many people say to me, you need to change your logo. My logo is a little witch riding a, a fork. You, you, right? oh, I love it. She's a, I she's, love a it. she's a kitchen witch. Oh, she's adorable. She's adorable. You know, and I had people tell me when I first started, well, if you want to be successful, you need to drop kitchen witchery. It should just be Kachina Aurora and you need to change your logo. And you just, I went, no, absolutely. Not. This is who I am. This is what I believe in. And people are either going to get it or they're not going to get it. And depending on, you know, sticking to that integrity will depend mm -hmm. on the trajectory of where my business goes. Um, and I think you have the same sort of thing happening here. Like, you know, beauty, witch is not, that's not, I don't know. That's, it's not scary. That's not, you know, we, we stand here and prove that witches and pagans and people that are into spirituality and, you know, it's not, it's what, it's honestly what has been keeping the human race alive for thousands and thousands of years, yes. the practices that we do, you know? Yes. yes. So yes. I, 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 I think you're really, uh, I think it's sad that even in today's day and age, even in 2022, we can't be a hundred percent honest and open about who we are and what we practice to some people that we may be very close to and that there are pockets in this world that don't accept us because of what we believe. And I know that that's not, um, that's an experience that, you know, half of the population has anyone of color or anyone who practices, right, right. you know, anyone who's happens to be, you know, uh, practice Islam or something like that. People are, you're always, if you don't fit into this back to what you're we talking about before, if you don't fit into this little box and you don't assimilate to exactly the way we think you're supposed to be, you're the bad guy, you are ostracized. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and I think witches have been for a long time. Um, but that's a whole nother conversation. That's that a, is, the, that's, that's, a, whole, that's that is an emotional conversation for sure. It yes. absolutely is. But you're, you're absolutely right. And I, and I, I'm, I'm sorry that you've had some of those experiences that I've had, but I'm, I'm loving that you have because there's this connection and I love that. And I, you know, I had that shopping the book. I had, you know, people didn't even just with, I had originally gone the route of wanting to get an agent before I, not a theatrical agent, but a, a literary a agent, agent. Yeah. And um, people that I knew were a good fit. Yeah. And I was sending them, you know, glamorous photos and, and very non-threatening things. And right. And, and they were just, or they said like, oh, we love your Instagram account. And we thought, you know, but, and I would think that's insane because this is such a good fit. And, and they would say like, well, you have to change, you know, you've got to change the title. Cause it, I don't think that was the original title but it, it had beauty witch in the title. Right. I think I originally had was calling it the beauty witch grimoire. And I'm sure that was even worse. And right. So, People are like, what's a grimoire? Yeah, we don't even know what, what that is. What? Yeah. What does that yeah. mean? And yeah. uh, the beauty book of shadows or something. And, um, and they said, they were like, wait, you can't, you know, you're going to have to change that. And, and I was just, okay. Bye. Bye. And, <laughs> and no, and I, no. I was, and, and it's funny because people that know me knew, I said, you know, if anyone gives me a hard time, I'm putting it out myself. That's it. Yes. I don't care. I'm yes. putting it out myself. You know, I'll, I'll do all the hard work myself because I end up doing it anyway. It's fine. And yeah, yeah. And I, and you know, people are like, it's really hard to self-publish. It's a lot. I'm like, well, if it comes to that, that's what I'm doing. Yes. And it didn't come to that. But, but the thing is that, uh, I was adamant and, and it is, a, it can be a tough one sometimes, like you say, sort of balancing between the two worlds. The very first interview I did for this book, or one of the first interviews I did, the host, she was really cool and she got right in on it and she said, well, you really do 
exist between two different worlds, this this very esoteric world and this very mainstream world. And I said, right. yes, very true. And I just don't get why there's any stigma anymore. I just don't get it. I, and you I can be will. both. You can be both. Yeah. You, and, and, and it's, it's, I just wish that people could just, well, I wish there could, a lot of words could be destigmatized, <laughs> but, yes. but I just don't understand why it's so frightening to people if they had any inclination. I understand how it got that way, but I, if they had any inclination of what we actually do and why. Yes. They and, would, they, everybody would be mixing up potions. Yes. Everybody and would be doing, 100%. there wouldn't be a woman on this earth that wasn't, you know. Well, that's uh, scary for men in charge. Of course. I mean, that's really what it boils down to, right? There, men in charge are afraid that women are going to, not just women, but anyone is going to rise up and 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 take their power away. And that's what we could possibly do with our potions and our self-love. And, you know, if we realize that we're worth this and that, and, you know, but again, that's a whole other yeah. conversation. And, if, and if, 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 you know, God forbid humans take care of themselves and are healthy, there goes big pharma, there goes big agriculture, there goes big everything. So right. and we can have that, certainly not in the States. Exactly. So that's how that is. And, but yeah, that's, that's exactly, exactly. And, there's, and a lot of, there's a lot of conversations. There's, a, there's a lot of conversation that can happen around that. And, and, and really I let's on that note, let's take a quick break because I want to hear from our fabulous sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to dive deep into uh, Beauty Witch's Secrets, your wonderful book. Um, that is, it really is, it's such so beautiful. So we'll be right Thank back uh, with Elise Marie and uh, we'll hear from our sponsors and then we'll be right back. We are back with the amazing, uh, very talented Elise Marie. And on the break, we were just talking about our, our kitty cats because we're crazy cat ladies. That we are, that we are, always will be. Always will be, always will be. I don't think I could, I always wanted cats when I was little, like when I was a kid mm -hmm. and uh, my mom hates cats. And she was like, well, if you get cats, when you grow up, grow up, I'm never coming to visit you. And I was like, all right. Oh. Okay. So as soon as I left, got out, got a cat, you know, um, right. but I love them. I love them so much. Uh, I could literally hang out with my cats all day. And oh, sometimes- I Right. Like they're, they're the best. And anyone who doesn't like cats, there's something wrong with them. I don't trust that. I yeah. don't trust I don't, it. I don't, and I don't understand it. I just, right. I don't, yeah, right. Like uh, what's wrong with you that you don't like cats? Mm -hmm. Maybe cats don't like you. I think cats don't like them. Right. I, I find cats to be like when you really spend time with a cat and I promise this will be the only thing that we talk about and it will change the subject <laughs> back to your amazing book. But cats really teach us when you spend time with a cat that really teach you about boundaries, mm -hmm. how to hold good boundaries, um, consent. Uh, they teach us about, you know, when to ask for love and when to say mm -hmm. I'm good. You know, like there's so many lessons of cat um, that I don't think I realized until I really started relationships with them. You know what I mean? I, I do. And they really teach you about holding your own space and yeah. about like just what I was talking about earlier, independence within a relationship. Yes. Just because we're in a relationship doesn't mean that I am going to be at your disposal 24 hours a day, nor do I want to be you. And, and they're great like that. And I think that's why some people, don't love cats because they don't get that. They want that. <sighs> they need to be needed. Yeah. That person yes. needs to be needed. And so a yes, dog. And they want someone that's always going to be willing to take their overbearing hugs all the time or whatever it is, or come, or, you know, come when they call or they need that. They need that control. I had someone say once that dog people uh, need to receive and mm -hmm. please, 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 dog people. I love dogs too, mm -hmm. but I love like dogs. No, nobody, I love nobody dogs. write me nasty emails about this, um, that dog people need to receive unconditional love all the time. And, I agree with that. And cat people need to give unconditional love 
all the time. Cause my cat can literally walk across me while I'm asleep and put his butt in my face. And I'm like, I love you too. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And also I, I agree with that. And I also think that some dog people, the dog people that don't need unconditional love who are rare, they like control. I've mm. seen that. I've seen that actually with male members of my family. I've seen that with former wow. lovers where they just like that. No, they obey. They do what I tell them. They they don't do anything weird in the middle of the night. They, they go out when I'm ready to take them out. I've seen that. Yes. And I just thought, oh, that's interesting. That is interesting. Right. Like I like I'm I have become an adult who likes my own space. Where I like as as a teenager, even in my early 20s, I couldn't be by myself. And if I was by myself, there was always music or TV or something. Right. And I've become yeah. in my 40s, I'm much more like, I love being alone and whatever. And cats kind of teach us that, like, like I love the way you put that, Elise, independence within a relationship and how healthy it is to continue to be an independent and an individual within a relationship. Um, and so that I really want to get into, let's, let's really dive <laughs> deep into beauty, which is secrets, um, recipes and rituals for the modern goddess. So first of all, let's just say this, the book itself is luscious. Thank the you. the pictures the the colors um i'm a very very visual person um and for those of you who are listening um you're not seeing that i am you go watch this on youtube <laughs> because i'm actually holding up the book and you can see all the beautiful photographs and the colors and everything i also like that you've got this motif of the mirror mm -hmm. and i wonder uh I wonder what inspired you to use this mirror motif throughout the book. And I wonder um, if you can share with us any mirror magic spells that you have or that you use or that you can hint at um, for us. Well, I, the idea came from, I had taken a photo. I was playing around. I'm, oh, I've always been very, very drawn to photos of people in mirrors. Mm. In fact, I had a book years ago that someone gave to me of these beautiful shots of women in mirrors. And I don't know what happened to it, but I love that. I love that idea. And I, I do that a lot on my Instagram accounts. I'm also really, very visual and I do a lot with, you know, a compact or I just love that. I love mirrors. And I was messing around with photos one day, years, a few years ago, and I got a shot of myself in the mirror. And it's not that mirror that's on the cover, but it was a similar one, but it was all wood. And when it came down to actually putting the book together, we all decided that, you know, the publisher and I, and I all, as a group all decided that we really preferred the gold and I love all things gold, so that was great. So, but it was inspired by this shot I happened to take of myself that I had actually put forward as a cover photo, but then it was actually, I had messed with the, the filter so that it looked really, really light and vintage and kind mm -hmm. of ethereal. And it was really cool, but I guess it probably wasn't what they were thinking of. So right, maybe not right for a cover. I still think it would have made a great yeah. cover, but you know, so I have my opinions. So, <laughs> um, so, but that sort of got the whole mirror thing going. And then we ended up, um, I ended up doing a bunch of shoots with a photographer and they didn't quite, I was trying to get a photographer during the, during lockdown. Yes. The second lockdown which was insane. I couldn't get, I couldn't get locations. I couldn't get, it was, it was a crazy nightmare trying yeah. to get photos. So I ended up taking them myself, yep. which was crazy, but it happened. And so, um, and then we did, we did sort of get the, the iconic cover shot and mm -hmm. we, 
so they ended up running with the idea of the mirror frame for the Love interior, it. which I thought was really cool. And so, but I, you know, I use that mirror image everywhere whether it's a modern mirror, whether it's, a, like I said, I love compacts, vintage mm -hmm. compacts, mm -hmm. whether it's whatever it is. And I, I can't imagine that I'll stop doing that. I just think it's a really neat thing. And somebody, it's funny, this other woman who is an entrepreneur on Instagram, I don't know if she'd want me to say her name, so I'm not going to, but she messaged me privately. She took these really great photos of herself with a mirror. And she wrote to me and she said, you inspired me. And I said, oh, I'm so glad because she she had these great shots she's she's really great and so so that kind of went with that and in terms of mirror magic I mean there's there's all kinds as you know there's there's glamour magic which is really not what I do it's separate from what I do but there's also just there's a lot of different kinds of mirror magic but what I one of the things that I love to do, and this this is in the book, but I see the space you get ready as your altar, your beauty altar. It's not your mm -hmm. counter. It's not yep. your bathroom sink. It's not, um, I don't know, the rear view mirror of your car. I it's mean, sometimes you put a little eyeliner on while you're driving. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't do I've that. done that at red lights. I, somebody yeah. actually applauded me at a red light once because I was doing a cat eye. And they, I looked <laughs> over and, and this man, this girl, they were obviously on a date. And they were like, I was like, yeah. <laughs> the flip. And so <laughs> it was years ago. But uh but what I love to do is see that as sacred space. Absolutely. It's your, so whatever it is, whatever you have, because everyone has limitations and not everybody has these grand bathrooms and grand dressing areas and we don't like to, but we don't all always have that. So whatever your space is for getting ready, I feel fairly insistent that you make it beautiful. You keep it clean just like an altar space it is where you step up to worship at the altar of your own beauty your own mm. femininity you don't have to be a woman but but you're it is a very female energy your divinity and yes your divinity and your your beauty that then becomes a lot of other things in this world because it's internal mm and it comes mm -hmm. it comes out and it and it's shared so it, it goes into everything and i feel really strongly about that too it's kind of like with kitchen witchery it's like you're putting your magic into your food or your yes. and then you're consuming it and you're sharing it and yes it's, like, it's the same it's the same thing and i do i i do a lot with with food and beverage because it's it's not separate it's very important and so one of the things I feel is really important is your space has to be intentional, clear, cleansed, meaning not just mm -hmm. clean, with a nice, a really nice natural spray concoction. Maybe mm -hmm. you make it, maybe you buy it. But I like to anoint the mirror with essential oils mm -hmm. that are important to you. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of cleansing with citrus and clove and cinnamon, some some combination. And then I like to anoint the mirror with something that's something that maybe you feel is more drawing to you mm. as opposed to clearing. I love that. For me, it's always some some combination of rose, amber, frankincense, myrrh, probably vanilla. And heavy mm. on all of these things mm -hmm. they, keep, they keep appearing over and over. Yes, again, I do, and and so that becomes your altar. And I feel that not only on a practical level, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and just say, "Okay, what what's going on here? Oh, today I look a little tired. Oh, my skin looks a little dull." Like, well, okay, we have we have potions for that, but also what's going on in the inside? Did you not mm. get enough rest? Everybody mm -hmm. is under rested and right. <laughs> exactly you know, under hydrated. What so what's going on? So not only 
how do we treat that topically? How do we transform ourselves? Body and spirit, really. Right. But also how do, what what's up with that? What what do we have to attend to in our personal spaces? Mm-hmm. And so if you wake up and you have a an outbreak of whether you're you're acneic or or it's more of a stress flare-up kind of thing. I call them solar flares. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, sure. You know, what's what happened? What is it hormonal? Is it environmental? Is it something bizarre you ate? What what is it? What's happening? Sure. And address that. And so so the mirror then becomes this reflection of of so many things that's going on. So and I'm sorry, go ahead. I have, a, oh, I have a question I would love to yes, ask about yes. that. I was I was going to say, and then, and then I feel that you you need to have a little bit of a ritual around loving yourself, loving mm. that reflection, whatever's going on there, whatever you may perceive as a flaw or or something maybe you don't feel great about or mm-hmm. something you maybe feel self-conscious about because you did wake up with a giant eruption in the middle of your forehead. right something you know whatever is it is we all have things that we say Ugh, sure oh my sure. goodness i didn't sleep very well or so or maybe we have something permanent on our faces that we're not crazy about or you know so and 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 loving those aspects and accepting those aspects and kind of saying well i'm going to take better care of you I'm going to treat you the way you are meant to be treated. I like to say you're you're casting a spell on yourself. You're casting a love spell on yourself. I love that. I love that. And it's really important. And that's kind of, uh, you know, part and parcel of, of the question I wanted to ask you is, it's really wonderful to set up your space and getting ready as an altar space or a sacred space. And uh, lovely to think of, uh, the mirror in that way of like uh, self-acceptance, but what kind of advice do you have for someone who struggles with body image problems? Um, mm-hmm. Someone who avoids mirrors at all costs, someone who doesn't want to see themselves in clothes, doesn't, you know, just kind of walks in dresses and, and leaves, um, you know, some, what kind of advice do you have for that person who would be incredibly uncomfortable, you know, with that type of ritual, how do you help them find more comfort in that type of space? That's a great question. I would say it's, it's, there's, there's a few layers to that. One is that, and it's, it's easy to, to, to just knock it off and save this, but you really do have to, get beyond the idea of comparing to other people. I think Mm. that's incredibly important. I think it's very easily said, very difficult to do. But I think you re I know that you have to do that. You have to stop comparing. And then I think part of the mirror ritual becomes staring really into your own eyes Mm. and saying, what do I see there? Am I seeing an unhappy person? Am I seeing a sad person? Why do I feel unattractive? What's happening? Why do I not like my reflection or I'm not comfortable with my reflection? And then you're getting into deeper psyche of, well, maybe my mother told me I was ugly. Maybe my ex-husband told me I was, there was something wrong with me. I was Mm -hmm. overweight. I was underweight. Something was not right. Something was not right or appealing maybe i've just been on the internet too much and i've seen way too many photoshopped people and way too many people that have altered themselves in some way and they're they're free to do that but maybe i need to not take that as reality or who cares you know Mm -hmm. um and i think we have to start to This is not a very American concept, but I do think we have to embrace our flaws a bit and not Mm. see them as flaws so much. Any one of us can pick ourselves apart. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. You can be renowned for your physical appearance and there's something you don't like about yourself. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Right, right. And 
I think when as you get older, you get to a point where you couldn't care less. Mm, At least truth. I've gotten to that point where, yeah. you know, I say, oh, my teeth are crooked and I have a gap and uh, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not right. doing anything about it at this point. Right. But, you know, you're go- everyone's going to age. Your face is going to change. Your body's going to change. Okay. I think there has to be a bit more acceptance of that. Go pick up a foreign magazine. Go pick up a, go, go see a foreign film. You're going to see a lot more reality. Mm. You're going to see a lot less perfection, Barbie mm-hmm. perfection. Mm-hmm. And again, if that's your thing, that's great, you know. But I feel that there has to be a lot more acceptance and a lot more emphasis on developing what's inside. Mm. What about your intellect? What about your your kindness? What mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. your creative life? Because to me, people always say, you know, how do you keep, how do you stay young? You create. Yes. A hundred percent. Have you heard this term body neutrality? Have you heard no. this term? So something I've, I've recently been uh, exploring body neutrality is the idea of not assigning good or bad or like, or don't like to your body. And, you know, as someone who is a plus size woman and has been told my whole life, that's not attractive, you know, media, family partners, that's not attractive. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm lucky enough that I don't fucking care anymore. Um, and, and, uh, you know, but this idea of saying, um, I love my, I'm grateful for my arms because they allow me to hug It's not about they look good or they don't look good. Um, Like I love my belly because it, um, you know, it, it laughs hard and, you know, like, like I love my, my legs because they're strong and they carry me around. It's not about, well, my thighs are fat or Mm -hmm. I, I have, you know, um, you know, what skin where I don't want to have it or I have stretch marks. It's about the function of the body instead of the appearance of the body. And I'd love to hear your opinion as the beauty witch on that. I love, love that you brought this up because I forgot to bring this up. <laughs> there's a there's a chapter in the book. There, it's part of the ritual of the body where as you're applying your, your creams, your oils, your preparations, and I would, I would encourage this every day. You can't, we can't all take as much time as we'd like to every day, but right. I do encourage this every day to put the thought in just like you're with your face and you're saying, well, you know, yep. um, maybe I'm not so crazy about this, but Hey, guess what? You know, it, it has, it serves this purpose. And I think you do that with your body. And I, and I detail it in the book where I say you go from head to toe or from feet all the way up and, or the other way. And you, you give you give yourself love. You give yourself appreciation. Your anointing. Mm-hmm. And as you're, so you're having this dual function of your, you're nourishing your skin. And you're at the same time you're giving yourself love, and you're you're saying you know your entire body. You somebody say, well, I don't like my arms. Well, they carry the baby. They they hold the baby. They protect the baby. You don't like the, sh- the shape or size of your breast. Well, they that's your heart. That's right. your heart area. Right. And watch the energy you put on your body parts. Mm. This is how we manifest disease. You know, ladies, let's not be too critical here. That um, is a huge point. A huge point. I don't want to glance over that. Watch the energy you put on these body parts because this is how disease can and disease can mm-hmm. manifest, right? We have problems in our bodies that could be exacerbated. I don't want to say caused, but could be exacerbated or can manifest in a dis-ease of that body part, right? So maybe I am self-conscious about my whatever and lo and behold, now I have, as you're saying, you know, this is your, your chest is your heart chakra 
-hmm. And if you're constantly looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, my breasts are too big, my breasts are too small, my breasts are uneven, negativity, 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 you're putting that energy in that area of the body, Mm -hmm. right? Wow. That is huge. And, and you hit on it with the legs because so many people say, oh, I don't like my lower body or this. And it's like, they get you where you're going. They support you. You have to say thank you. Yes. And, and, you know, I just want to touch on this very briefly. It also can work in reverse because if you make a body part a little too precious, Mm. somebody's madly in love with something on themselves. I don't know what it is. They, they, Maybe they're insecure and that's the one thing they think they have. Mm. Be careful because now you're putting so much focus on that as being important, you know? Mm-hmm. You, you have to be careful with the energy with that too. So Absolutely. I, I think. And, and the other piece of it too is that this is, this is a bit more superficial, but we're talking about body image and 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 all the feedback we get from everywhere whether we ask for it or we don't i you know somebody could people get people get flack for everything everything yeah and you have to um you have to also stop and say well you know everybody every single person has some at least one if not multiple great features great attributes that are superficial you know Mm -hmm. you've got fantastic hair okay you you run with that make that a focal point you know Mm -hmm. if 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 you are a kind of person that says oh i don't like this well but i this isn't so bad so maybe i'll just show this emphasize the positive right down right this a little Uh uh-huh emphasize i said i do say that like just even in my my own whatever i'm like when i'm taking photographs i only want to be photographed from my nipples up like just from nip (laughs) nips up like this this part is good the rest mm -mm, that's because hair's good eyes are good boobs are great like this is this mm-hmm. part, let's let's just not have the other part. And you and you know that and and that's the whole thing. And then you know, pay a little bit of extra attention yes. to those. Doesn't say, well, I'm gonna just spend the extra money on a on on making sure I maintain a great haircut, great conditioning, mm-hmm. whatever it is, whatever it is. Treat mm-hmm. yourself, please, mm. by all means, treat yourself. Yes, because and- the, the treating of yourself is the ritual. It is the feeling good and doing the thing back to the very beginning of the conversation. This is how we love ourselves. This is how our brains and our hearts understand that we are showing ourselves love. You could sit on the couch all day long and be like, no, no, I love myself. I totally love myself. I love myself. I love myself. But if you're not actually doing the thing. Loud and walk it. Yeah. Right. It's back to what you said at the beginning, Elise. It's being in a relationship, right? Being in a relationship with yourself means if I, if there were two of me, what am I doing for her to show her I love her? Yes. And what is she doing for me to show me she loves me? Yes. Well, she being my body drives me to work. Right. She hugs my partner. She pets my cat. She, exactly. she cooks my meals. She does all these amazing things for me. What am I doing for her? I, I, I couldn't have said it better. And and on the most basic level, she, your body, functions for you in, in the most simple ways. And, mm-hmm. and you have to, and if we do get a health concern, if we do manage to develop dis-ease, we, we have to give that love to that area as well, too. That's mm-hmm. really important. Really, wow. really important really important and I've had moments I've had I've had things where something has gone horribly wrong and you have to not get angry at it you have as Mm. best as you can you have to try to just give that area more love and more understanding Mm. and say okay we did we did kind of create this Mm. 
okay, it got to a point where it became real in the real world and now we have to go to doctors and now it's an actual thing. But somewhere along the line, emotion, thought, something triggered this to grow. Mm. Okay, it wow. happens, you know? And wow. and that's where I, that's where I'm so, so adamant about caring for yourself because so much rides on it. Wow. So yes. And and briefly, um, and, and and I was also going to say earlier, if there is something that really bugs you, really, really bugs you, or if it's it's a health, it's something that's going to somehow negatively impact your health, you do need to have a serious, honest conversation with yourself that says, maybe I should take some pains to improve in this area you know loving yourself is also about taking self-responsibility yes yes so right? if it's something that you say well i just i don't like this this some part of me but you know it's also like gee um it's of no consequence right it's it's, it's just like something all of a sudden it starts to become a health factor or it becomes something that just makes you miserable then yes, you you may want to consider doing something about it, improving right. on it in some way. Right. But yeah, it's it's and 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 to to bring this back to witchcraft, this is another thing too that I'm always kind of going on about. But I think it's important, which is the magic is only as strong as you are. So if you're mm. not strong, if you're dragging your carcass. And you are trying to manifest something. <laughs> well, manifestation, you have to do the work. I, people say, oh, yes. I'm going to manifest this. How, how am I going to manifest this? Well, you're going to have a clear a clear vision of what you want. You're going to, uh, you know, put your heart and soul into it, but you're not just going to wish it. You're actually going to do the work mm -hmm. to, to, you know, and take the steps. It's, it's active manifestation is active you know yes. it's decisive it's act action yes. decisive action towards your goal and combined with unrelenting faith that you're mm -hmm. going to get what you want get what you're putting out and and have the result you want the the factor is a how how much of that how much work are you willing to do and mm -hmm. b being patient and realizing that the universe doesn't function on your own timeline. And sometimes yeah. that manifestation takes 10 years or 15 years or what have you, like you writing this amazing book, you had to, you manifested this by going through the steps, by shopping publishers, by workshopping it and making it happen. But you didn't wish it happened. You made it happen. No. And I, you know, I'm 100% an action person. So I don't, I never just leave it up to whatever. Exactly. You know, see, I, you know, but, but yeah. And, and part of that is the spiritual and, and the belief and the faith and all of that. And, you know, you can light the candle, you can carve the candle, you can light the candle, but now what are you going to do on the physical plane? Thank you. Right. Yes. You can't just say, well, I lit a candle and I don't know what happened. I didn't get that job. And I don't know. Well, what did you do? And which brings me back to you have to you have to be your best version of yourself. So why wouldn't you take good care of yourself? Why wouldn't right. you try to make yourself as healthy on the inside and the outside as you possibly can? Because then you're just bringing that. It's all energy. Yes. So you're bringing yes. that into what everything you do. And you say, okay, I'm bringing a bright energy to this today. Yes it's going to work in the most beneficial way for everyone. Wow. Elise Marie, you are so insightful. Um, and so this conversation has been so much more enlightening than I, like, I thought we were going to talk about like <laughs> face cream and, and that stuff we is can. in here <laughs> and that stuff is in here too, you know, like magical concoctions for body and, and hair and, you know, spells and stuff like that for taking care of your skin. And, and that's all in here, but the deeper messages 
being your best self, loving yourself through these actions. And, and love is an action word. And so we should apply that action to our own bodies and our own hearts and minds. Um, and, and I love just like, if I could quote you, I can't remember exactly what you said. You said, um, the magic is only as strong as you are. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a brilliant, it's only, I, I just, that's going to stick with me. Um, okay. Elise, tell us where we can buy your amazing book, uh, where to find you online and, uh, how to follow you and all that jazz. Well, you can order the book through many channels. You can, you can buy it in lots of shops, um, esoteric shops, spiritual shops. Also, I'm pretty sure it's available, you know, Barnes and Noble, and it's inv- available on Amazon. It's available through the publisher at Llewellyn.com. It's about avail- their signed copies at my website, <laughs> which is, yes, which is uh, thebeautywitch.com. And you can find me on, I'm mostly active on Instagram, which is the Beauty Witch Official. I have to be honest, I am never on Twitter. Me neither. And I, <laughs> and I, and I'm sort of reluctantly go to Facebook several times a month to promote my column. Right. Or, or something book related because I kind of feel like I have to, but I'm not really active on there. So if, if you send me a message and I don't get back to you, it's because I haven't been there. And, but I, but I'm, I believe I'm Madam Beauty Witch on those platforms, but you can write to me if you have any questions or anything. I'd love to hear from you, Elise at thebeautywitch.com. I love it so much. Elise, you have been so fantastic. Um, Thebeautywitch.com, amazing. Okay, so here's my very last question. And I asked this to everybody. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything that we just talked about. (laughs) Uh, It's my signature question. Obviously, you know that I'm a kitchen witch. And I know that you are a plant-based food person, right? So if you could have me make you one magical meal, Mm. what would it be and why? Right now, because we're having a heat wave in New York City and lots of places, I would have you make me something with tons of, maybe not tons, but... (laughs) But a beautiful variety of seasonal fruit, seasonal fruit, and maybe some vegetables. But right now I'm just feeling fruit, something just... magical and naturally sweet and quenchy. And... I, what about a beautiful watermelon like, like, I feel like a watermelon drink of some kind for Ugh, you would one be of so favorite. amazing. Right. Yes. So yes. like beautiful, like, um, frozen watermelon with mint and lime mm. and put it all in the blender and yeah. serve it to you. I like super quenchy. I would love to make you like a gorgeous salad with spinach and watermelon and Ooh, I would and, love that too. Right. Like, but you don't eat cheese either right so no, no just vegan no, cheese no, yeah. no, dear, so vegan you're cheese. making me hungry <laughs> that's what i do <laughs> but i would love to make something that had like a like some sort of a vegan goat cheese for that sort of savory yeah put that on a gorgeous yeah. salad with watermelon and mint and baby spinach and like little snap peas and mm. Mm, it sounds maybe i'm gonna have that for lunch Oh, and, and sunflower seeds because I, I love sunflower energy. There's some solar energy. In. I don't know yeah. if you can see behind me. This is my little, my, I'm in my kitchen and this is my, my sunflowers. Mm-hmm. I just redid oh, my, I my hutch. Actually, I do yeah. have all sunflowers everywhere. Oh, um, this is my, it. my llamas kitchen. So then when after llamas and we're head towards Maybun, I change everything over to like oak leaves and acorns and pumpkins. That's right. I saw that on your Instagram. That's yeah. beautiful. Thank I remember you. I wanted to write to you about it or comment. It. Oh, you're so sweet. But it Thank was you. beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Very inspiring. Thank you. As are you, Elise Marie, the beauty witch, buy her book, follow her on Instagram. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, And until next time, everyone, 
I wish you many, many blessings and so much gratitude. Bye.